Well, hello there, fellow geeks and geekettes. Welcome to yet another video. Now, as far as the news with Psycho Sub go, um, I'm going to make a video about my reaction or take on the fact that Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton are coming back to, you know, play Batman uh, in one movie, actually, but uh, I'm going to make this video after this one because there are going to be a million videos, you know, about this. Everybody's going to have their own take on it and honestly, what is there to say? But that's not the matter of this video. Um, I've come up um, a very interesting article on bounding into comics. I'll provide a link in the description down below. And um, it concerns Superman and uh, the modern interpretations of it, the modern incarnations of Superman. And uh, what I'm going to read out is uh, or, you know, has been said by uh, Chuck Dixon, uh, the famous and glorious creator of uh, Bane, uh, the one of the most famous Batman villains, especially after The Dark Knight uh, Rises was made by Christopher Nolan. So I'll read out the article very quickly and then I'll give you my take on it. Uh, Bane creator Chuck Dixon explains why current writers can't tell good Superman stories DC Comics writer and the creator of Batman villain Bane, Chuck Dixon, recently explained why he believes that current Superman writers are unable to tell good stories about the big blue boy scout. Dixon comments, uh, comments came when he answered a, fa a fan question in his ongoing YouTube series Ask Chuck Dixon. On Facebook, Andrew Runyon asked, same question I keep asking. Over the past however many years, Superman has been destroyed as a character. Do you think there's any hope that Big Blue will ever be restored to greatness, or do you think we should grieve and move on as we would for a dead relative? Dixon initially responded, responded by lamenting the current state of major franchises. He stated, Well, there's so many franchises now that it's hard to be a fan of. I mean, it's hard to be a Star Wars fan. I know, I was a Star Wars fan for years, and they just ruined it for me. I'm not angry about it, I'll just walk away. This is not Star Wars made for me, other than The Mandalorian. I like The Mandalorian, Chuck Dixon says. He continued, Star Trek pretty much ruined for me the last few years, and Superman long ago ruined. Basically, when the classic guys for me, the last classic guys, Jurgens and Ordway, and Roger Stern and Butch guys, when they left the Superman franchise, it was over. I didn't care anymore because they loved the character. Dixon then went on to detail while current creators are unable to tell good Superman stories. The problem is, he says, that Superman has, and it's not really a problem. It's a problem for the creators. It's a problem for the writers. They don't know how to write good stories about a guy who is a Boy Scout, a guy who has a moral spine, a code of behavior. He's a gentleman. He's a paragon of virtue. They simply do not know how to write that kind of character and make it interesting. Dixon continued. And yet the roadmap is drawn. Even though that seems like a very tight set of restrictions, it's not. There's a lot of room in there to tell great stories. He elaborated. And people will say, well, he has the powers of a god. You know it's not interesting because how can you challenge him? Well, the writers in the 50s and, and 60s certainly came up with plenty of ways to challenge him. Dixon then detailed that uh, he struggled writing Superman in the past, but he would find ways to work it out. And he says then, And I've been backed into a corner on Superman stories myself, with the Maud Weisinger process of what if Superman did this. Then you are like, how's he going to do this? Well, it's my job to figure out how it's going to work. He continued, and I've been in that corner, and it was tough, and it was challenging, but I did it. I didn't whine and cry and change the, the rules just to write my version of Superman, or somehow alter Superman to my quote-unquote vision. Dixon then states, so will he ever return to greatness? No. We are just going to have to remember the way he was until some other generation brings, up, brings him up and takes him back to his former glory. But in the minds of the general public, the people just walking around, Superman remains the same. Superman is not altered 
by all these different, especially comic book versions of him. Because most of the public isn't even aware of those changes, he adds. Dixon concludes, so I wouldn't worry about it. Superman continues to exist in the pop culture zeitgeist and that is never going to change. He's still going to be the character we all know and love. Right, um, so what did he say that I, you know, wouldn't say myself? I absolutely do agree with that. Um, as I said in many of my previous videos, characters such as Batman or Superman, Spider-Man, they have been around for over 80 years. And uh, most of them are really a product of a different time, a different era, a different mindset. If you look at the world and people today, um, the good old values that uh, people mostly cherished in the past, they are gone. People are selfish, people are spoiled, people are bored. In the modern developed world, both in the West and the East, as I said, people are spoiled. We've got everything. We can go to um, a shop at midnight and buy ourselves food and drink if we want. We don't have to fight for bare survival every day. I'm talking about the developed world, right? Not about some poor countries there where they don't even have water. But that means that the Maslow's pyramid of needs um, gets, a bit, gets a bit crippled then, you know? Or not crippled, but uh, you know the Maslow's pyramid of need, right? So first you need to fulfill your most basic needs and then you can fulfill uh, some other needs like um, more philosophical, metaphysical, psychological needs. So when you don't have to struggle for a bare survival every day, and when you basically can do everything or anything and case can say anything which mostly applies for everybody except for the white man these days um you start coming up with bullshit because there's nothing for you to fight for so you come up with things to fight for and you come up with crazy things to think about so people are different these days than they were in the past and um as i said the 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 values that were cherished in the past and that I do still cherish these days such as good behavior, decency, justice, um, truth, justice, uh, the American way, not really myself, sorry, um, loyalty, honor, honesty. These are all values that Superman stands for and when you yourself do not believe in these values you can't write them in your work of art because even if you are playing with other people's toys as they always say in this case it means that when you are a writer and you are writing about a character that belongs to one of the you know great publishers such as DC and Marvel uh, if you don't have those values in yourself you can't write about them properly so that's why Superman isn't what he was in the past that's why any superhero or I mean, that's why no superhero is the way he or she was in the past. Look at Batman and what the people are doing with Batman these days. It's deconstruction after deconstruction after deconstruction. Batman is a whiny cock these days um, who isn't um, self-reliant at all. He can't do anything by himself, Batman. And that's, I think, even though he... In, in, the, past, in the past stories, the good stories... He also needed help a lot, you know, of the times. He had the help of Alfred, he had the help of Robin, one Robin or another, one of the four or five that they were. And um, there were times when Batman or Bruce Wayne was absent, so Dick Grayson had to take the mantle of Batman. Or then even Azrael became Batman was, uh, when uh, Bruce's way Bruce Wayne's bag got broken. So, yeah, but... Still, for me, in my mind, from the most part, um, Batman is that kind of superhero who's a lone wolf and fights his own personal war against crime in Gotham and is this caped crusader, this lone crusader, on a crusade against crime. Uh, but uh, people don't understand this anymore. The, the, the modern writers who are still allowed to write these days 
they don't understand this anymore. So that's why they can't write any proper Batman or Superman stories. But as Chuck Dixon himself said, we've got a lot of material to read, written and done in the past that we can read and reread and re-enjoy all the time. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. Everything will die. Everything will perish. Or at least everything will change once. So that is why the superheroes that they were, uh, you know, that they once were, they can't stay like that forever, unfortunately, because people change. And those superheroes are made by people. So if anybody expected Superman and Batman to stay the same for over 80 years and more, well, I'm sorry, but you are dead wrong. And I'm also sorry that Superman and Batman have changed so much to the worse. But that doesn't mean that I have to read the new comic books. I don't. I read Scott Snyder, but that's all. And Sean Gordon Murphy. But that's it. That's it for me, for Batman. I mean, I read the the ongoing Batman title just for, for, the, just for the sake of it. But I, I, let me tell you, I suffered through each and every issue of Tom King's Batman. Literally suffered. And I only thank God that uh, a single issue is only about 20-something, 20 25-20-something 20 pages long. Because it's, it was a disaster. So, but I, you know, I'm not sad, I'm not angry about that. Because I will always have Year One, The Dark Knight Returns, Hush, I'll always have Nightfall, I'll always have um, you know, uh, the no, Man, no Man's Land. I'll have everything that Chuck Dixon did. I'll have everything that um, uh, Scott Snyder did. And Grant Morrison, the entire Grant Morrison's run. I'll have the 80s Batman, the 70s Batman, and the 90s Batman. I could be talking about the different Batman incarnations that I love for hours. So, yeah, and that the same thing applies to Superman, right? I always have Superman stories to read and reread, and I'm glad for that. So, yeah, Chuck Dixon was absolutely right and absolutely correct, and I do agree with that. And what do you think, my friends? What do you think? Do you share the opinion of Chuck Dixon and myself, or does your opinion differ in any way? Let me know in the comments down below. I will be all from you, my friends. See you soon, and bye.